Hi boys and girls, it's time for Sunday School. This is Miss Betsy. We're going to concentrate today, since we're doing this a little bit shorter, we're going to concentrate today and the next couple weeks on Lent. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent. This lesson is for uh, March 15th, no, 14th, which is this, no, that was last Sunday. This lesson is for March 21st. And if you remember, and the weather's supposed to be nice, this Sunday is our Easter egg hunt, so I hope to see you all there. So what we're going to do today is talk about the things that happened Holy Week. The first day of Holy Week is the day Jesus entered a big city. Does anybody know what the name of that city was? It starts with a J, and we hear about it a lot. He entered the city of Jerusalem. Now, Jesus knew everything that was going to happen this week, and he knew as much fun as this was on Sunday, that the rest of the week there were going to be some hard things, especially at the end of the week. We'll get to that. So this is, we call it Palm Sunday, and in church we're going to have palms, which everybody can take when they go home. They're the, the leaves, and if you look up front when you're in church, Beside the piano and beside the organ, there are two palms each, palm plants, so you can see what they look like when they're smaller. Uh, the people in Jerusalem, they had trees, tall trees with uh, leaves on them. So what they did is they took the leaves and the branches and they pulled them off and they waved them in the air and what did they shout? Word that starts with an H is one of the things that they shouted. Hosanna, Hosanna, they shouted. It means save us, but they were also praising Jesus because they knew he was the king. They thought, however, that he was going to be a king who was going to come in and get rid of the Romans and, and uh, conquer their city. But that's not why he was coming. He was coming in peace, and that's why he rode a donkey. So as you can see on the donkey, the some of the disciples put their cloaks over the back of the donkey, and then Jesus climbed up and sat. Remember the story of how they got the donkey? He sent two of his disciples to go to where they would find a donkey tied up, tell the owner that the Lord needed it, and they would bring it back. And then they brought the donkey along. So he rode the donkey into Jerusalem here, some of the disciples. There would be a whole crowd. It was like a parade. And people threw their cloaks on the road, and they threw branches, and they waved palm branches. And this is how Jesus entered Jerusalem. And that was Palm Sunday. And here's some more. I'm using, this week, I'm using something that we made, I think, maybe last year. No, not last year, the year before, when we were getting ready for Lent. Now, here are cloaks that they threw on the road. You know, they didn't wear coats like we do. They were more like capes. They didn't have buttons and things. And there's a lady waving a palm branch, the donkey that Jesus rode on, and, of course, the palm branches. I don't know why this one is upside down. Well, we'll fix that later. Okay, so as the week went along, Jesus was in Jerusalem, and he went to the temple. When he went to the temple, he was angry because there were money changers and people sh selling things and charging more than they should and trying to cheat people out of money. And he was angry because he wanted his house, God's house, the temple, to be a house of prayer. So he was so angry that he went in and he knocked over the tables and he told them all to get out. He said, my house will be a house of prayer. Okay, then on Tuesday, he began teaching. He wanted, he knew what was going to happen. He knew that he wouldn't be with the people as he was very much longer. And he wanted them to know about God. So he spent his time teaching and healing, you know, he would, somebody who couldn't walk, he would heal them, or somebody who had another problem, he would heal them. 
On Wednesday, he went to spend the evening with his friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And Mary, as you can see here, she had a jar of perfume, a very expensive jar of perfume. And she poured that on Jesus' feet and then she wiped, his, the, wiped the perfume off with her hair. Now her, her sister and her brother said, well, you could have sold that perfume and given the money to the poor. There's lots of other things you could have done with it. But Jesus said, it's okay because she is showing praise to me. Okay, so we get to Thursday and Jesus told the disciples to go and look for, okay, excuse me, the tape is stuck. Look for a man who had an empty room at his house and they were going to need that room because First of all, it was Passover, and that's why so many people were in Jerusalem. It was Passover, and they were celebrating. Now, remember the story we had of how the Egyptians wanted to leave Egypt and Pharaoh wouldn't let them go? And when he finally did let them go, they were able to leave, and they got to the, the Red Sea, and Moses held his stick out over the water, and God parted the waters. Well, every year there would people... Where they would celebrate that. They called it Passover. So that's why so many people were in Jerusalem. So on Thursday morning, Jesus told the disciples to find this man with a room at his house, and that's where they were going to have their dinner. When they got there that evening, you see a towel here and water, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Now, you know, people wore sandals, and it was very dusty and dirty. And when you went to somebody's house for dinner, usually their servants would wash your feet before you ate. Jesus did that, and the disciples said, No, no, I, you, I should be washing your feet. But he said no, and he let them, he let them sit down, and he, would, he washed their feet. So when they sat around the table, he told them, that he would be leaving them soon. And he had a cup of wine, we use grape juice, and a loaf of bread. And we have, Pastor Jeff has a loaf of bread and he breaks it in half when he's preparing us for communion. We have little cubes in a plastic bag if you've been there. And we have the juice in little cups with lids. And they had their dinner. And it was called the Last Supper because Jesus knew he would be leaving them. Now, I don't know in this picture. No, in this picture, the story I have for you next week, you can tell which one of the disciples was going to betray Jesus. But we'll wait for next week for that picture. So after they prayed and after they had dinner and they sang some songs, Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he asked God to get, help him get through the things that were going to happen. Near the disciples, the disciples weren't with him, and he asked them to stay awake with him while he went off by himself. But guess what? They didn't stay awake. They fell asleep. And he went back, and he talked to them, and they said, Okay, okay. And he went back, and he prayed, and they fell asleep again. And he came back again, and they were asleep again. But there's Jesus praying. He prayed very hard because what he was facing in the next day or two was very hard. And he said, maybe, God, you can do this another way. But he knew this was God's plan. So here is some coins. We know the disciple Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And so that's kind of what the coins look like. And he went up to Jesus in the garden, and he kissed him, and he said, Teacher, and that told the soldiers which one was Jesus so they could arrest him. Okay. So Jesus went to the um, um, Pilate, the Roman governor, his house, 
and he was put on trial, and Pilate couldn't really find anything that Jesus had done wrong. So he went to the crowd and he said, what should I do? What should I do with Jesus? And they said, crucify him. So that was his ruling. He tore his clothes. He was so sad that he had to give that order, but they crucified Jesus. So he went out to a hill. They all went out to a hill. And there were three crosses. Actually, Jesus had to carry his, and it was large and very heavy. And the story next week, I have a picture of that too. But he had to carry it after he had already been beaten. He had to carry the cross to the hill. And he was put on that cross with a thief on either side. And one thief said, what are you doing here? You didn't do anything wrong. But hey, you're here with us. And the other thief said, I know you are God's son. And Jesus told him, you will be with me in paradise today. Okay, so after Jesus died on the cross, he was put inside a tomb. It was like a cave carved out of the hillside. And they put a large stone in front of it. And there were actually soldiers. Rome, the governor, put soldiers there to guard it because Jesus had said that he would rise again in three days. And the governor was afraid that his followers would come and get his body and then say, look, look, he's gone. He, he raised from the dead. So he put that stone and the guards there so that couldn't happen. But guess what? That didn't keep Jesus in there. On Saturday, the disciples were very sad and very quiet, and they were all hiding because they, they didn't want anybody to know that they were with Jesus. They, would, they were afraid they would be arrested. Okay, Sunday morning. I've got more pictures here. So Mary Magdalene and another Mary and another woman went to the tomb because what the Jewish people did is would, they would put perfume and spices on the body. And they couldn't do it on Friday night, so they waited till Sunday morning. And they got there, and as they're walking, they're saying, who's going to move that stone? It's so big and heavy. But guess what? When they got there, it was already rolled away. And they looked inside. That's where Jesus had been, and he was not there. In fact, there was an angel. See the light coming out? There was an angel in there. And he told them that Jesus, here's the angel, that Jesus was not there, that they didn't need to look for someone who was dead when he was among the living. And the women were so surprised. So they went back and they got the disciples, and the disciples came and looked, and they were right. He was, Jesus was not there. So that is why we celebrate on Easter Sunday because after everything that happened that week and after them putting Jesus on the cross, guess what? He didn't stay there. He didn't stay in the tomb. He came back. He rose from the dead, and we celebrate that on Easter. We sing Thursday, Monday Thursday, that's the night of the dinner, we have a service at church, and on Friday, there's also going to be a service at the church out, community church, and they usually sing very sad songs because the Last Supper and Friday when Jesus was crucified was a sad time. On Easter Sunday, we sing happy songs. We have flowers in church, and sometimes, I don't know if people still do it, but we used to wear hats and get dressed up in our new clothes because we're coming to celebrate Jesus coming back from the dead. And as I said, he didn't stay there. He didn't stay in the tomb. He is with us. And we can't see him like the people could then, but he is with us every day. We celebrate Easter because Jesus died to take away our sins. Everything we've ever done, everything we've going, that we're going to do, he took all our sins away. They're all forgiven. And we thank Jesus for that. So that is Easter, and Easter is the happiest day in the church year. 
Okay, time-wise, boy boys and girls, we're coming up on what I think is going to work like it did last week. So, this is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Remember, on Wednesday, Miss Janet has Kingdom Kids. It's at 5 o'clock. You can call the office, Miss Sherry or Miss Janet, and she'll send you a Zoom link. Remember, this Sunday, and the weather sounds really good, is our Easter egg hunt. We're going to get together between 2 and 2.30. Miss Sherry is going to talk to us for a few minutes, and we have crafts to do, and we have Miss Janet is making her sugar cookies. If you come and used to come to Kingdom Kids, Miss Janet makes the best sugar cookies, and she said she's going to cut them in different shapes. So we'll see, and she has icing on them. The cookies are gonna be wrapped. We're going to have, I think, lemonade or blend or something like that. Everything is outside, so be sure you bring your jacket. Be sure you bring your mask, because everybody has to wear their mask. And that is this Sunday. It starts at two o'clock. We'll be done at four o'clock. You can stay as long as you like. We're gonna have crafts, we're gonna have snacks, and of course, hunting for eggs. So I want you to fold your hands, bow your heads. We're going to say our prayer. Dear God, we're getting ready to celebrate the happiest day in the church year, and that's Easter. You sent your son Jesus to die for us. He didn't stay dead. He's with us all the time. Our sins are forgiven, and he loves us, and he's with us every day. Thank you, God, as we get ready to celebrate Easter. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for coming to Sunday School. I'm going to cut off here, and then I'll send this to Miss uh, Elizabeth, and she will put it on the website. So I'm glad you're here. Happy Easter early. Happy Palm Sunday early. Happy Easter egg hunt this Sunday. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for coming to Sunday School, and I'll see you next week for Sunday School, and I hope to see you Sunday at the Easter egg hunt. Bye, everybody.